record session automation in and select this to all tracks. That means when you've got session record enabled and you want to record automation into tracks, they do not have to be record enabled. Start transport with record and turn this off. What that basically means is as soon as I press the record button here, it's not going to start recording straight away. I will have to press play, then it will start recording. That one I just find really handy because when I press record, I might not be ready yet. So I can press record, arm it essentially, and when I'm ready, press play and go. Next, make sure loop warp samples are set to auto. Auto warp long samples, we want to turn that to off. That's when you import long, say, song length samples, say three minutes, it's not going to warp them. There's two instances you would do this really for sampling and DJing, also for importing mix session stems. Now I do a lot of mixing in Ableton Live. So when I import the stems, I want that off because otherwise the stems are gonna be warped all out of time. Usually stems are exported in time with each other. Port them in, they should all line up. If that's turned on, they won't. So it's important you have that on. Default warp mode should be set to complex. It's a bit CPU heavy, but it's the cleanest one. Create fades on clip edges. You want to turn this off. That will create a four millisecond fade on the start of every clip you import. If you're using Ableton Live's loops and one shots, it won't really clips or pops at the start. If you're using it in a splice or any other sample provider online, there's not gonna be any clips. There's no need for that and it can affect the transients of your loops. If however, there is a clip on one of your samples, if you go into live, if you drag a sample into live like this and you hear a clip, you can double click and you can press the fade button here and that will apply the fade to the individual clip. And last but not least in this section is default launch mode. Change this to toggle. By default, it's set to trigger. That affects what happens after you've pressed play on the clip. If I press play on a clip here, and I press it again, it re-triggers it. Now in my head, I press the clip. When I want to press it again, I want to turn it off. So that's what toggle does. So you can set it here to the individual clips or have a default. Now I've set that to toggle. If I press play on it now, it'll launch it, press play on it again, it will turn it off. Now, if you change that globally, it will only do it to new clips that you import into Ableton Live Session View. It will not change all the clips that are in there already. You can just simply press Command A or Control A on Windows, select all, and then change all the clips there. Now you've got your